Hi, my name is Ella Mashiach, and today I have the great privilege of interviewing Mr. Donald Farmer, Principal Program Manager for Microsoft SQL Server. Hi, Mr. Farmer. Hey, thank you very much for interviewing me, Ella. It's <laughs> exciting. Thank you. Um, well, first of all, congratulations on the release of SQL Server 2008 R2. Well, thank you. Um, the current release focuses a lot about self-service BI uh, through Power Pivot and a lot less about analysis services. Can you tell us about the future strategy for SQL Server? Is it going to focus more about Power Pivot and less about analysis services? Hmm, that's a good question. Actually, Power Pivot is built by the analysis services team. And we don't really think of it as being different from analysis services. We think of it as being a different kind of analysis services. It's putting the power of analysis services in the hands of the Excel user. So in the future, you'll see us taking some of the innovations that we made for Power Pivot, such as in-memory analysis and the... Um, the VertiPack? Yeah, the VertiPack, yeah. And we'll start to put that into analysis services for, if you like, more traditional analysis services users who are building... Uh, cubes and analyses. So in the first version, this is about self-service, but in the future, the same technologies will be there for standardized BI as well. Mm. Okay. Um, Amir Nitz, distinguished engineer at Microsoft, mm. wrote on Chris Webb's blog about DAX and MDX. Right. We love both DAX and MDX, and MDX is not going away. I think you'll see DAX evolving in new important directions that MDX will never cover, and a large and growing portion of the calc will be done in DAX. And Chris Webb himself, who is an MDX guru, wrote on another occasion in his blog, even if blogging about MDX feels these days a bit like blogging about COBOL. <laughs> is DAX going to be getting all the functionality that already exists in MDX? Is it supposed to replace it? That's a good question as well. Um, so. It's funny when you talk about Amir and, and, and Chris in this way, because um, I, I know Amir was very keen on, on DAX as a way of getting the power of MDX for business users. Mm. So the idea was somebody who could write Excel functions might not be able to learn a, a, a query language like MDX, but they would be able to do something uh, still quite complicated. And that's the big difference, is that... Um, DAX is not a query language. It's, it really is an expression language. Mm. And as a result, it's, more, it's going to be much more difficult in DAX to do things like selects and subselects to act on subcubes or something like that. While MDX will still have those capabilities, those sort of set-based capabilities. So they are still going to be two separate things. DAX will become more powerful. We'll add some MDX functions. And there are some things you can maybe do in DAX that you can't do in MDX. So, for example... Um, data preparation and data cleansing functions mm -hmm. might be possible in DAX where they wouldn't be in MDX um, because DAX can do derived columns and things like that. Um, but then I think MDX is going to be used for those scenarios where you've got complex set-based set um, uh, calculations to do. So I think there's still going to be a future for both of them. Okay. Um, currently, sharing the same Power Pivot file and working on it as a team can be done only through SharePoint 2010 Enterprise Edition. Uh, I think that makes it more accessible to uh, medium to large size businesses rather than small to medium sized businesses. Do you consider it a threshold some of your customers may not pass? Is that something you're considering of changing for the next release? This is something we're looking at. Uh, when we first started with Power Pivot, I think a lot of people haven't quite understood this, that we did intend Power Pivot to be an enterprise product. Power Pivot is for Excel Power users who have either very large volumes of data or very demanding business intelligence-like calculations to do, and then who need to share that with a large number of people and share that in a responsible way. And that almost by definition is an enterprise story. Um, so we did target the enterprise with our initial release, and it's an enterprise SQL Server, or enterprise SharePoint that's required. Mm -hmm. But the demand from small medium business has been tremendous. And so we're looking at ways in which we could um, help them. And different ways of doing that may be if we moved um, support into something like BPOS, uh, so that you could now use um, Power Pivot on the cloud. That might be mm -hmm. one way of doing it. Changing the licenses might be a way of doing it. Um, or providing some other mechanism for small, medium businesses to share files might be a way of doing it. So we're looking at different ways in which we might do this. But um, yes, you're right. We've, been, we've actually been taken by surprise by the demand from small, medium business for this. Yeah, I mean, I feel, I feel like the whole 
logging community is just a buzz with power pivot. Oh like, yes, for sure. Yeah. Totally. Absolutely. I mean, if you if you already have SharePoint Enterprise, this is a fantastic thing, um, because you know you already have if you have SharePoint Enterprise and SQL Enterprise. So our our large enterprise customers who have licenses for these things, they're just totally excited about it. And and you're right, the blogging community is also getting very excited about it. It's great to see.